Hello everyone, welcome back to another lecture. Uh, this is the third lesson of Unit 7, Systems of Linear Equations, and this time we are going to solve these systems of linear equations by using a method called substitution. Uh, it is a little bit less labor intensive than the solving systems graphically, so some of you will like that, though it's not as visual. Um, we'll get into it, it's not too bad. So for example, uh, solve this linear system. Now, what we are going to do is because we have variables in two, uh, we have two variables that are the same, when I have something like this that says y is equal to 2x plus 3, when I have that and I have another equation, 5x minus 2y is equal to minus 4, these y's are equal. They are the same. They must be the same, right, to satisfy both of these equations. So if y is equal to this, I can plug that in over here because I have a y, right? What I'm left with then, <coughs> pardon me, is 5x minus 2 times what we had before, 2x plus 3 and that all equals minus 4. Now I have an equation that is only in x. And if I just simplify this, consolidate my like terms, uh, rearrange and isolate x, I can find out what uh, x is and then find out what y is. So 5x minus 2 times 2 is 4x. Minus 2 times 3 is minus 6. That all equals minus 4. Uh, 5x minus 4x is just x, and then I add 6 to both sides, so that equals 2. So x is equal to 2. Now I can take this x value, and because I know that x equals 2, I can plug it into my original equation to find out what y needs, what y actually is. So let's do that. If x is 2, then y is equal to 2 times 2 plus 3. y is equal to 4 plus 3, and as far as I know, 4 plus 3 is 7. So I have x is equal to 2, and y is equal to 7. For a final answer then of 2, 7, it is still written as a point. The x value is 2, the y value is 7. If you were to plot these two equations on, on a graph, they would intersect at the point 2, 7. You can then, of course, go and verify this. So try it in this equation, try it in this equation, and find out if it works. But that is what we need to do to solve by substitution. Let's do another problem here. We have now x plus 2y is equal to 8 and we have 3x minus 3y is equal to minus 3. I can easily rearrange this to isolate x. I could say x is equal to uh, 8 minus 2y. And then take that portion and plug it into my other equation for x. It is important to plug it into the other equation and not the same equation, otherwise you'll end up with an endless loop. 0 equals 0 and it just doesn't work. So we plug that in, 3 times 8 minus 2y minus 3y equals negative 3. This would be 24 minus 6y minus 3y equals negative 3. I'm going to keep my y's on the left and move my numbers over to the right. So that would be negative 9y is equal to subtract that, is subtract 24. So that would be negative 27 on this side. Divide both sides by negative 9 y is equal to 3. So I have completed half of the problem. Uh, now that I know that y is 3, I'm going to take it and plug it back into my original equation that I um, had rearranged. The reason I do that is because it's easiest to find x that way. So x is equal to 8 minus 2 times 3. x is equal to 8 minus 6 find out x is equal to 2. So therefore, our solution to this problem is 2, 3. It doesn't matter the order that you find them, 
but you do need to write them in terms of the x value first and the y value second, as that is how a point is represented. Um, yeah, if there are any questions about that one, please let me know. But we are isolating for a variable and plugging it into the other equation and solving from there. We have one more example and then a try it on your own, and then that's it for this lesson. So we've got 5x minus 3y equals 18, and I've got 4x minus 6y is equal to 18. Uh, I'm going to take this bottom equation and rearrange it to solve for x because none of the options look good. There's no way I'm going to avoid fractions. So I would have 4x equals 18 plus 6y. I am then going to divide everything by 4. So I'd have x is equal to, let's do 3 over 2y, and then 18 divided by 4. That's not nice either. So that's plus 9 halves. Ooh, kind of ugly, but we love fractions in this house. So we're going to then take this portion of it and plug it into our other equation for x. So it goes right there. So we have 5 times 3 halves y plus 9 halves minus 3y equals 18. This would be 15 halves y plus 45 halves minus 3y equals 18. I'm going to get rid of the fractions by multiplying everything by 2. I would be left with 15y plus 45 minus 6y equals 36. I can then rearrange and combine like terms. So adding the 6y, that's 21y is equal to, let's see if we subtract this. Did I do this correctly? Six. Let's see. If we subtract, it's fifteen. It's three. I don't need to. Add, I don't need to flip flip the sign because it is already on the same side of the equation. That's not what was working for me. So this is actually nine y. Fifteen minus six. That equals we subtract forty five from both sides. That equals negative nine over here. Y then equals negative 1. Okay? I can then take that negative 1 and plug it into my original rearranged equation right here, like that. So x will then equal 3 halves multiplied by negative 1 plus 9 halves. x is equal to, that's negative 3 halves plus 9 halves. Negative 3 halves plus 9 halves, that means that it's 6 halves, so x is equal to 6 halves, x equals 3. And I need to find space to find, write my final solution. Right down here, let's say 3 minus 1. That is my final solution. x value of 3, y value of 1 satisfies both of these. I hope that we were able to follow this. Um, we rearranged this equation, uh, plugged it into here did the math to find out that y is equal to negative 1, then plugged y into this equation that was rearranged to solve for x, found x was 3, and wrote our final solution here. So uh, it is a little bit of work. Uh, I always find it less work than drawing a graph and finding out where they intersect and then checking all that good stuff. So there is a one for you to try on your own. Go ahead and give that one a go and unpause it when you're done. Let's see if we got it right. Okay, so we have 2x minus 4y is equal to 7, and 4x plus y is equal to 5. The second equation is really easy to rearrange, and there's no, going to be no fractions involved. I just moved the 4x over, so I'm going to do that. y is equal to negative 4x plus 5. I can now take this and plug it into the other equation for the y value. So 2x minus 4 times minus 4x plus 5 equals 7. All right? I've just plugged in that for x. 2x minus, I should say, plus 16x uh, minus 4 times 5 is minus 20 equals 7. We add these two together. It looks like we get 8. 
min x, and then I'm going to add 20 to both sides. So that equals 27. Divide both sides by 18 to isolate x. x is equal to 3 halves once I uh, reduce that fraction. I'm then going to take the 3 halves, and I'm going to put it into my already rearranged equation right here. So y is equal to negative 4 times 3 halves plus 5. y is equal to, uh, that's negative 12 divided by 2, so that's negative 6 plus 5. y is equal to negative 1. And that means I have my two points, my two halves of a point. 3 halves for x minus 1 for y. That is what our solution is. Uh, it is always the same process. Isolate for a variable, plug it into the other equation. Find that variable. Um, then use that variable to find your missing variable. Either x or y does not matter. And write it as a point because that is truly where those lines intersect, which represents the value of the answer for this problem. Uh, if you guys have questions, please let me know. But thanks very much for tuning in.